In this series, I'm planning to build a digital clock with a binary display using just relays and lamps. The idea is to go over some of the important principles of digital logic using only the simplest of electronic components. What we're learning now will ultimately be integrated into a relay-based CPU. In the last video, we saw that a circuit of two inverters that feed into each other can be stable in either of two configurations, 0110 and 1001. But how do we switch between these two configurations? Well, that's what we'll go over in this video. I'm going to introduce some new terminology here because I want you to get used to it. I'm going to use the terms asserted and deasserted. Part of learning how computers work is learning the language people use to describe them. So add asserted and deasserted to your growing vocabulary. Generally, asserted means active or doing something, while deasserted means inactive or not doing anything. For the signals we're using, asserted means true or one, while deasserted means zero or false. Now, this isn't always the case. Sometimes it's actually the opposite. But for now, asserted means one and deasserted means zero. What I'm going to do is introduce an OR gate between the output of the left inverter and the input of the right one. I'm going to call the output of the rightmost inverter Q and I'm going to show the truth table for the OR gate. Let's start with the B input of the OR gate set to zero. If we have an output of Q equals one, this feeds back to the left inverter, so its output will be zero. We have a zero and a zero going into the OR gate, which gives us an output of zero. This feeds back to the right inverter, which outputs a one and maintains the state. Similarly, when Q is zero, this works its way through the circuit, and we present 1 and 0 to the OR gate. Its output is 1. This goes to the inverter on the right. It outputs a 0 and maintains the state. So basically, when B is set to 0, it doesn't actually do anything. Let's say we're in some unknown state and we assert B. Then it doesn't really matter what the other input to the OR gate is the output will be 1. This produces a 0 on the output of the inverter, which feeds back to the left inverter. It outputs a 1. This feeds into our OR gate, and the output of our OR gate stays 1. This feeds into the right inverter, which outputs a 0, and the 0 state's maintained. Now, if we deassert B, or change it to 0, the OR gate still outputs 1. This feeds into the right inverter, and the Q equals zero output's maintained. It doesn't actually matter what state the circuit was in. If B is asserted, the Q output goes to zero, and it's maintained even after B is deasserted. No matter the state, asserting B resets the output to zero. Thus, we call this B input reset. That's all good and well, but that's a bit like having a gate latch that we can only unlock. We want to be able to control both states. Any guesses how I'll do that? Well, the trick is to use a second door gate. This time, it's between the output of the right and input of the left inverters. I'll label the connections to this new OR gate L, M and N. When L and B are both deasserted, then both OR gates act as a buffer and the circuit can be in either state. Even if we don't know this state, if we assert L, the output of the left inverter is zero, the output of the right OR gate is zero, this feeds into the right inverter which outputs a one, which feeds back to the left OR gate. So now, if we deassert L, the OR gate still outputs a one because of the feedback loop, this propagates through and we maintain the Q equals one output. Regardless of which state we might be in, if we assert L, the Q output goes to 1, so we normally call this L input set. This circuit is known as a set reset latch, or simply an SR latch. But we usually draw it a slightly different way. I'll disconnect the outputs, move them around a bit, then reconnect them back up. Hopefully this is more familiar to some. While we're here, I just want to point something out. 
This little circle means these wires are connected, whereas here you can see one wire jumping over the other, and that means they're not connected. Now we saw in the last video that the OR gate usually takes two relays, and the inverter takes one. So we should need six relays to make the SR latch, but I can do it with two. It's a little bit of a special case, but I'll explain why we only need two relays for the SR latch in the next video. But let's confirm that it actually works. I'm going to use a new type of switch in this circuit. This is a push button switch, and it only has two contacts. It's only when the button's pressed that electricity can flow between the two contacts. When the Q output's on, the left relay is on and the right relay is off. Electricity flows through the right relay switch. This turns on the lamp and feeds back to the left relay coil which keeps it on. This circuit's in a stable configuration with the lamp on. But, if I press the reset button, electricity will flow along the green path to the right relay coil. This turns the right relay on, but because of the way I've wired the contacts, this causes us to lose our red pathway for electricity. The left relay turns off, and in the off position, we now have a second green pathway for electricity to get to the right relay. Now, when I release the reset switch, we stay in the lamp off configuration, which, again, is stable. We're nearly there. If I press the set button, we establish this red pathway, which will energize the left coil. This turns on the left relay switch, which means we lose the green pathway for power to the right coil. It turns off and creates a second pathway for maintaining this configuration. So, even when I release the set switch, we stay in the lamp on configuration. I built this one out of relays, the SR latch. There we go. In summary, when the set and reset signals are low, or deasserted, the Q output just stays the same as it was previously. When we assert the reset signal, the Q output goes to zero. When we assert the set signal, the Q output goes to one. But what happens if we assert both set and reset? Well, technically the behavior is undefined. There we have it, the SR latch. Again, I can't stress how important it is that you get your head around this concept. In this particular counter, there are actually six SR latches in total, and we'll look at how these are wired together in more detail in a future video. That's it for this video. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe.